my name's Nathaniel David. Uh, I am um, American. I, I tend to think that um, for us to understand life, you know, requires an understanding of death because the ideas of life and death from an evolutionary point of view are kind of this, you know, is the, uh, even though the boundary between one state and another is very abrupt, you know, the entire system was designed with the conceptual premise of finite individual life. And so, if you want to understand life, you would better understand death. Yeah, so we work on a deceptively simple question, which is how come you get sicker when you get older? And we work on, and there's probably a variety of mechanisms that contribute to this, and right now we work on one of these mechanisms. And it's, uh, and the basically it works like this. Uh, at conception, you're a single cell. You divide a bunch of times, ultimately about 50 times, and somewhere along the way to 50 cell divisions, cells encounter a stress, and they stop dividing forever. And when cells do this, they are called senescent cells. And they pull this emergency brake, and they can't divide. And it's a really important emergency brake that you do not want to mess with because it's an anti-cancer system. However, as you age, these senescent cells begin to accumulate in your body. So my son, who's very young, has no detectable senescent cells, whereas my stepfather, when he died at 87, was full of these. And no one knew before our work if these accumulated senescent cells are good for you, bad for you, or neither. And so what my group did in collaboration with groups both uh, at the Mayo Clinic, Jan van Dersen's group, and Judy Campisi's group at the Buck Institute, is we created strains of mice where we could clear out these accumulated senescent cells whenever we wanted, and we got to ask what happens. What happens is that mice live on average about 35% longer, but more importantly, they have profoundly extended something called health span, which is how long they live free of diseases, chronic diseases of aging. And so in summary, what we make are drugs that do that, that clear out these senescent cells from people to treat these chronic diseases of aging that have always been thought of as inescapable features of being old. We don't think they are. Mice live on average about 35% longer, but more importantly, they have profoundly extended something called health span, which is how long they live free of diseases, chronic diseases of aging. And so in summary, what we make are drugs that do that, that clear out these senescent cells from people to treat these chronic diseases of aging that have always been thought of as inescapable features of being old. We don't think they are. We don't think so, but that's certainly a possibility. But even if it is the case, pharmaceutically, we know how to deal with it. Because you just kill the new ones. A Hello Tomorrow is awesome. Okay, it's uh, highly dynamic people that normally in my life I would not meet because I'm kind of a, a narrow, nerdy person that tends to sort of only hang out in my kind of narrow orbit. And it's incredibly freeing for me and intellectually liberating to get to be here. I'm showing mice, although it's not really obvious it's a mouse, it looks kind of like a sperm. Um, basically a young mouse, and then you go through time, generates an old mouse that's all kind of red and shriveled and sad, okay? And uh, this is time with senescent cells. So now I'm going to draw you um, young mouse, or actually just, I'm just going to do this. An alternative path through time is minus senescent cells. I'll do that in. Okay, SNC is senescent cells. Yeah. All right. And now you get a happier mouse. He's not a perfect phenocopy of his baby self, but he is like better. So I'm giving a graphical relative happiness level. So you've got two smiley faces versus one smiley face. Okay, it's better at the beginning. Yes, yeah, we don't know how to reset. Yeah, we don't know how to fix aging. We just fix some mechanisms.